Welcome back to State of the Union. The January 6th committee is set to release its report next month, but some staff say it may not represent all their findings. Sources told The Washington Post that they felt Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney was only interested in evidence that pertained to former President Trump, which prompted a fiery response from a spokesperson for Cheney and also one from the committee. Here with me now to discuss January 6th uh, and a lot of other issues is a member of that committee, Democrat Adam Schiff. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, let, let's start with that Post report, which was a really remarkable report. Staffers were told the final January 6th report would likely almost entirely focus on Donald Trump, potentially leaving out uh, a significant amount of your committee's report and investigation in other areas. That's what the Post said. Is it true? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, at least I certainly hope not. Um, I would like to see our report be as broad and inclusive as possible. Uh, we are discussing as a committee among the members uh, what belongs in the body of the report, what belongs in the appendices of the report, uh, what is beyond the scope of our investigation, uh, and we'll reach those decisions, uh, you know, in a collaborative manner. Um, you know, I think that one of the things that has made our committee so successful is we have worked uh, extremely well together. Uh, that doesn't mean we always agree on everything, but it does mean we have a lot of respect for each other and we get to the, the goal, which is providing the American people with a full accounting of what took place on January 6th. That has certainly been the public perception of it and the public face uh, of the committee, but it sounds like there's a different story, at least in some parts of the committee behind the scenes. I mean, Liz Cheney's spokesman put out a statement accusing staffers on that very committee, on her own committee, of trying to slip, quote, liberal biases into the report. Here's what this quote said, uh, that Cheney won't sign on to any narrative that suggests Republicans are inherently racist or smears men and women in law enforcement or suggests every American who believes God has blessed America is a white supremacist. And then a committee spokesman accused disgruntled staffers of, quote, cowardice and said they're helping Donald Trump and others responsible for the violence of January 6th. Those are remarkable statements. Uh, they are. Uh, you know, I don't think the back and forth is particularly helpful to the committee, and, and I don't want to engage in it. Um, we're going to get to a consensus on the report. We're very close to that now. Uh, we're close to the putting down the pen and going to print. Um, and I think the report is going to set out uh, in a, uh, I hope, very comprehensive way what took place, what led to that attack, uh, um, and, and all the circumstances around that. Uh, we're also going to be releasing the evidence, uh, which may be the most important thing. Uh, the voluminous transcripts, the documents and emails, uh, we want to make sure that that's put before the American people. We certainly don't want uh, the Jim Jordans of the world to uh, cherry pick anything not disclosed and make a false or misleading narrative out of it. So the, the country's going to have the evidence. Uh, they're going to have our report. Uh, and I'm enormously proud of what we've done and, and know I'll be proud of the final result. Well, I was going to ask you about that. Jim Jordan has already said that he is going to, uh, he will be the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. He is likely, he is going to go through the evidence you left out. You're saying that there won't be evidence that will not be made public. The evidence will all be made pro public. Now, we'll have to make sure that uh, we scrub that evidence for personally identifiable information, that the evidence that we provide uh, protects people's uh, uh, security, uh, doesn't put them at risk. Uh, so there are things that we're going to have to do along those lines. Uh, uh, but, but yes, we want to put the evidence before the American people, which uh, supports the hearings that we've done, uh, as well as the report that we'll put out and will be a comprehensive picture. A few weeks after January 6th, you said the attack on the Capitol was, quote, a massive intelligence and security failure that needs to be fully investigated. There were nine public hearings. None had a specific focus on exactly that, on the security and intelligence failures. Will those be detailed in the final report? Uh, I certainly hope they will, and I'm advocating for that. Uh, I think that's part of the broad picture of why they... Uh, capital was vulnerable to attack, uh, what intelligence we had, what intelligence we missed, uh, what intelligence was put before uh, law enforcement. Are you meeting resistance on getting that into uh, it? You know, I don't want to go into our internal discussions. Uh, I think we'll get to common agreement. Um, part of it is, you know, what belongs in the body of the report, what belongs in the separate appendices, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what can be corroborated. Uh, we want to make sure that we have every fact nailed down. Uh, that's been part of the reason our committee has been so successful and we want it to continue to be. I want to move on, but before I do, there does seem to be tension surrounding the vice chair of the committee, Liz Cheney. 
Uh, one former staffer told The Washington Post that people working for the committee became, quote, discouraged when they felt it had become a, quote, Cheney 2024 campaign. Is that fair? Uh, I've never viewed it uh, that way. And I think her role on the committee has been indispensable. I have tremendous respect for her and for Adam Kinzinger. They've shown a lot of courage and backbone, uh, something in very short supply in the GOP these days. Uh, so the committee not, would not have been the same without both of their participation. And, uh, and I have nothing but respect for both of them. As you well know, the uh, man who was trying to be speaker, Republican Kevin McCarthy, says that he uh, wants to kick you off the Intelligence Committee, the committee that you now chair, uh, because of your handling of the Trump-Russia investigation, and specifically that you repeatedly asserted that there was direct evidence of collusion, direct collusion, which didn't materialize. What's your response to McCarthy? Well, McCarthy apparently doesn't think it's collusion if your campaign manager is giving inside polling data and battle strategy in, in key states to an agent of Russian intelligence while the Russians are helping your campaign. But most Americans would call that collusion. Uh, McCarthy's problem is not with what I've said about Russia. McCarthy's problem is he can't get to 218 without Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar and Matt Gates, uh, And so he will do whatever they ask. And Right now, they're asking for me to be removed from my committees, and he's willing to do it. He's willing to do anything they ask, and that's the problem. Um, Kevin McCarthy has no ideology. He has no core set of beliefs. It's very hard not only to get to 218 that way, it's even more difficult to keep 218. Uh, that's his problem. So he will misrepresent my record. He'll misrepresent Derek Swalwell or Ilhan Omar, whatever he needs to do to get the votes of the QAnon caucus within his conference. He's not the only one. The incoming oversight chair, uh, James Comer, told Punchbowl News in an interview, I don't believe congressional investigations have a whole lot of credibility now. I blame Adam Schiff for that. But it's also both parties to blame for investigations in the past. I want to change that. What's your response? Well, Comer doesn't believe in the Russian investigation. He doesn't believe in the Ukraine investigation. He doesn't believe in the investigation of January 6th. And why? Because those are investigations of the serial abuse of power by Donald Trump. Uh, and Comer and Jordan and McCarthy will do nothing but carry Donald Trump's water. Someone, as you point out, who's sitting down for dinner with anti-Semites, uh, who's sitting down for dinner with, with bigots, who won't condemn them. Um, this is who they're making common cause with. And so they will do and, what, and they will say what they need to get along with Donald Trump. We're out of time, but I just have to ask. If you are subpoenaed by Republicans when they take over, will you comply? Um, you know, we'll have to consider the validity of the subpoena. Uh, but uh, I would certainly view my obligation, the administration's obligation, to follow the law. Um, and the fact that they have disrespected the law uh, is not a precedent I would hope that would be broadly followed. But we'll have to look at the legitimacy or lack of legitimacy of what they do.